Hello, welcome to Signs and Wonders. Now, um, a couple of episodes in back when <laughs> I was talking about causes, four causes and four worlds, and how important it is to get a sense of your own spiritual substance. And I mentioned that you could look at your astrological chart and get some ideas from that, or you could perhaps go on a an inner journey, if you could find a therapist, a past life therapist perhaps, you could get some kind of idea of what you wanted when you came into this world. But another way of doing it is to look at the signs and wonders from your childhood, to look at, well, what happened when I was really tiny? Because the energy of who you are comes in at birth and various events will start shaping up around you. Some of them might look, in retrospect, to be not very comfortable, but in retrospect, they could actually be just what is needed for you and that there's some kind of uh, feedback loop that you are actually creating what is appropriate for your process. Now, here's an example. Um, in Retrospectively, I have had a tendency, perhaps at one time, to think, oh, my childhood would have been better if my mother hadn't moved me from London when I was three years old because I would possibly have had a better opportunity educationally and possibly I would have been able to go to things like dancing classes and so forth, whereas I was taken to the countryside and I um, often, certainly when I became a teenager, felt it was a rather stuck, kind of boring place and not much happening and so forth. However, if I take a longer view of it, especially as I got older, I could see that perhaps this was what my soul needed, was to have the opportunity to experience nature like in a mystical kind of way, to experience that directly. And when I was um, in my late 30s, I moved again to the countryside, I moved to Somerset, and I had an experience there of having a sensation of, of a presence in the landscape, and when I meditated on it, I was delivered this amazing vision of an archangel that I came to realise was Sandalphon, who, who you can see in the angel script cards, Sandalphon. And then it was sometime afterwards that I had a recall of being in the Cotswold countryside when I was only about four years old and I was able to walk to school on my own, about two miles, and I would walk down the Cotswold roads because there weren't any cars then really, so it was quite safe. Um, but over the wall I could see this amazing rolling landscape and I realised that that angel had been there. I hadn't seen it in my eyes when I was only four, but I recalled it as an adult and realised, yes, that angel had been in there, in that landscape for me, present for me, even though I wasn't able to see it as a four-year-old. I don't have a recall of seeing it, but I have a recall of feeling the um, power and the awesomeness of the natural landscape around me. And so that t ties in what happened to me in my late 30s with what was going on for me when I was only four years old. So I, I, I hope that's clear what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> and one of the, the things that comes up in modern parlance, if you like, in a, in a modern social setting, when people talk about, you know, what influences you in your life, you know, what are your influences? Oh, you met such and such a person when you were small and that influenced you. 
Well, I'm of the mind that nothing influences you. You are influencing it. And that what arrives in your life, like a person or an event or, or whatever, is actually something that you need and that you're calling towards yourself. Like It's like a magnet. And um, one particular book I'd like to recommend you, and I, I have already recommended it in, in one of my newsletters not so long ago, is a book by um, <clears throat> James Hillman, who was, no, is no longer alive, a, a very significant Jungian scholar. And this is called The Soul's Code, In Search of Character and Calling. And in that book, he sets out exactly that concept that, you don't um, you don't get influenced by the stuff that's coming in. What comes in is something that you are calling towards yourself. And again, if you go back to astrology, that's a kind of a, a way of actually seeing. Well, what do I call to myself? If, for example, in my case, the planet Venus is in the sign of Pisces. A sign of her exaltation and that's in my my uh, fourth house in the Hellenistic system and what do I call to myself with Venus in Pisces I call nice things beautiful things Venus is about beauty in abundance into my home and um, I think you can see in my home that I have a few beautiful things. And that's almost like something unconscious that I just do. It comes naturally to me. That's part of my calling is to make the environment beautiful. I've also made beautiful wedding dresses and, and so forth as well. But that's part of my calling is to make things beautiful and I have attracted towards myself opportunities to do that. <clears throat> and, and I find it very easy to find beautiful things to work with, even if I haven't got a large income. I've always been able to find beautiful pieces of fabric, you know, even in a charity shop, or sometimes when I felt richer in Liberties of London. But that's not something that I could have dictated as... Um, um, kind of the law of attraction idea might suggest the attraction is happening because that's something essential in who I am there are other things that I attract from other uh, planetary uh, assignations if you like but what we're talking about here is that when you discover something about the substance of who you are Let's go back to Aristotle and his four causes. What is the substance of who you are? Because it's very easy for the ideas to come. It's very easy to become efficient. And it's very easy to reach your goal when you know inwardly what the substance is that you can work with. And discovering your character that's what James Hillman calls it, or your calling, discovering that puts you on a path which is simple and direct. It's almost like the map is laid out in front of you and you don't, you don't have to think about it. Very simple. In your end is your beginning, is the famous line from... T.S. Eliot, and that's based on many older philosophies, of course. So look at your beginning, and then you start to understand what your end might be, and then you'll see how easy it is to move between one and the other. Simple and effortless. Many blessings, as always. Keep shining, and once you've found your calling, if you want to start grounding it and you need some help, look at my course, Grounding Your Life Purpose. Many blessings.